talk about a brand new whiskey. This is Black Barrel Proof, a brand new release from Jameson. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Matt, I'm a whiskey nerd and like I said, this is Black Barrel Proof from Jameson. This is a brand new release and when I say brand new, I mean it. This bottle just arrived yesterday, so let's pop the seal on this, get it into the glass and I'll tell you a bit more about it. So, this is essentially a limited edition version of Jameson's Black Barrel. So the regular Black Barrel comes in at 40% alcohol or 80 proof, this comes in at 50% alcohol or 100 proof, hence the name Black Barrel Proof. Now, the regular Black Barrel is actually a really nice whiskey, despite only being at 40% proof. So it's a really nice, interesting whiskey. It's, I think, able to carry a huge amount of flavor despite only being at 40% proof. And I think that's because of the way Jameson make the whiskey. So according to Jameson, the grain whiskey that goes into the black barrel is actually a small batch grain that they only make once or twice a year. It's got more toffee, butterscotch and caramel notes than their regular grain whiskey and they combine this with pot still whiskey, which is a style of whiskey that's unique to Ireland and they age it in three different types of casks. They of course age it in the classic bourbon and sherry casks, but they also use black barrels which have been charred to a level 5 or crocodile char. This additional charring adds more of the caramelized notes, adds more of the sugary notes, the sweet notes that you get typically from an oak and adds much more flavor. So I really like the regular black barrel, even though it is only at 40% proof. Like I think it comes out like a green spot, like a red breast, despite only being at 40% proof, I think it carries a huge amount of flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit of it now. And then once I've finished tasting the black barrel proof, I'll compare the regular strength version against it to see how much of a difference that extra alcohol makes. So let's get into the nose on the Black Barrel Proof. Oh wow, that leads with sweetness. That is like dense caramel sweetness, toffee sweetness. It's, it's really nice. There's a little bit of fruit in there. Maybe like it's, it's hidden mostly behind that sweetness. There's a little bit of kind of I'm getting almost like a like a berry note coming through, kind of like kind of like a sweet um, coffee. You know, if, if you get a coffee that's not a darkly roasted coffee, it has some of those kind of acidic floral notes coming through. That's kind of what I'm getting there. On top of that lovely, rich, dense sweetness, there's little to no alcohol, at least on the nose. Like it's, I think it's very well incorporated. I think it's mostly hidden behind those sweet notes. In terms of vanilla, it's definitely there. There's definitely a nice presence of vanilla in this whiskey. It's more, as I said, muted though. It's it's the, those caramel notes are really dominating. They're really upfront. It's kind of interesting to see how much of the flavor of the caramel came through from the charring as opposed to the vanilla. As I keep going back to it, I'm getting a little bit of that alcohol coming through. Like it is 50% ABV. It's not a full cask strength, but it does have a bit more weight behind it than that regular strength. So it's gonna have more of that ABV, but I think it's very well incorporated into the whiskey. So let's get in for the palate. Mm, here's that spice. Oh, there's that spice I was looking for. Like the char from that oak typically releases some nice oak spices and it's there in the palate. It wasn't really hugely present on the nose, but it's there in the palate. It's rich, it's dense, there's that sweet note that's not hidden, that's not falling away, the notes from those nose, that kind of caramel, the toffee, that's there. On the end there's a little bit of oak spice coming through as well, so I'm going to go in again and see what else I can find. This time around, much more of those kind of vanilla notes, much more of those oaky notes coming through. It's very nice. It's very well incorporated, like the 50% ABV, it's, it's, it's hard to tell this is a 50% ABV, like there's a bit of heat coming through, a little bit of heat in the palate, but it's not going to blow your mouth away, it's not going to be so hot you can't taste anything. I think it's very well incorporated, I think maybe at 55% ABV, it probably would have been maybe too hot, it might have burned out your tongue, it might not let you taste all those sweet notes, but as it is, that dense, rich, toffee, caramel note, that definitely covers up the ABV and lets you just enjoy more of the flavors without the burn. 
I'm not really getting that kind of acidic coffee note that I was talking about in the nose. That was definitely more of those floral notes. I am getting a little bit of kind of the sherry spice. It's not hugely apparent. It's definitely underneath the sweetness. It's underneath the oak. It's underneath the ABV, but there's a little bit there of that dried fruit. There's no real nuttiness. It's just, you can tell there's a bit of sherry in this, but it's not hugely apparent. So I'm gonna go in again and let's talk about the finish. Okay, on the finish, the kind of sweet notes, they do fade away a bit before the oak spice fades away. So there's definitely a bit of an evolution there from the sweetness in the palate. Once you swallow it, you're left with the spiciness, you're left with the ABV, there's a little bit of heat, but that's nicely balanced against the um, against that, that, that spicy note. There's also a little bit of sherry coming through. Like I said, it was there in the palate, but I think on the finish, it's more noticeable. As that sweetness fades away, you can kind of unpack some of the other notes that are there in the whiskey. This is a really, really nice whiskey. Like, it's got all the flavor that I remember from the Black Barrel. It's just dial them all up. So if this was a 10, this would be an 11. Everything is just a bit more concentrated, that bit more dense, that bit more full of life. Like, I've always said that this is a good whiskey. I just wished it was a bit more ABV behind it so I could see what it was capable of, and this definitely delivers. So now that I've had the Black Barrel proof, let's go back to the regular Black Barrel and see how it compares. Okay, on the nose, I'm getting the same notes. Obviously, it's the same whiskey, just less, but there's it's more leaning towards kind of butterscotch, toffee, I'm getting very little, or no even, oak spice. The uh, kind of coffee, the roasted coffee, that light roasted coffee note I was getting on the Black Barrel Proof, not really here. I think definitely it's it's lost something between the Black Barrel Proof and the Black Barrel. Let's go in for the palate. Okay, the heat is gone. There's, there's very, virtually no heat compared to the Black Barrel Proof. So. Yeah, on that regard, it's kind of interesting, it's nice. This is definitely more beginner friendly. If you're not used to heat, if you're not used to the ABV of a whiskey, this is really good. Like, I know I'm kind of saying it's not as good as a Black Barrel Proof, but it's a really good whiskey. This has huge flavor behind it, huge sweetness. It's very welcoming. It's great in a cocktail because it's got that bit of sweetness, but still that vanilla flavor, that whiskey flavor that comes through. It's really good. It's just, <laughs> after having the Black Barrel Proof, going down to the 40%, it's just not standing up to it, to me at least, because I do prefer that higher ABV whiskey. Mm. And on the finish, it just kind of falls away much faster. Like, interestingly, the spice actually doesn't really come forward for me on the finish of the Black Barrel, especially compared to Black Barrel Proof. It's way more sweetness. The sweetness almost lingers longer, I think, than it did here. Maybe that's because the spicy notes, they disappear when you water down the whiskey. So the spicy notes were more apparent here and they were able to survive longer. But for me, in the palate, the spicy notes weren't there and in the finish, they weren't really there. This is definitely a whiskey that leads with and follows with sweetness. Whereas this one has a bit more spice, has a bit more weight, has a bit more heft behind it. That said though, I probably wouldn't be rushing to use this in a cocktail. Like, I think it would go great in a cocktail, don't get me wrong, but it's limited edition, so I don't really want to waste my bottle of it. Um, I might make like a whiskey sour or an old fashioned with it, just to see how it stacks up against the regular strength version, but that would be it. And then I think I'd just save this for sipping and enjoying, and definitely for comparing between the two. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. If you like the review and the comparison, maybe drop me a thumbs up, maybe drop me a comment. You might even consider subscribing. I put out a new whiskey review every Wednesday and a cocktail recipe every Friday. So subscribe and you'll see them all. But for now, until next time, sláinte.